Folks, Shop Talk has come down to Walker, Missouri, and we're here at uh, Dirt Works with Gary Clark. And Gary, man, there has been a tornado blown in from Kansas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there sure has. <laughs> and we're going to try and talk a little bit about it here today. Uh, Gary, how did this issue with the frame rails ever get started? Uh, is there a gray area in the rules? And did chassis manufacturers see that gray area and start working on that? Or has there been some other reason why chassis manufacturers started making these frame rails the way they are? It, it's hard to say exactly how the whole deal started. Uh, I'm sure you can date back a long time to when the first one was done that nobody ever knew was done. So as far as actually saying that this is something that's brand new to the world, it's not anything that's brand new to the world. Uh, you know, gray area, as a chassis manufacturer, as a race car driver, as anybody that's in a racing industry, we're always looking for something that's a gray area. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people say this is cut and dry, here's what it says, and, and this is how it is. But if you read it, you know, there's ways it can be interpreted differently in order to interpret that this is the right thing to do or not necessarily the right thing to do but mm. there's not a wrong thing to do uh -huh. so to actually say it's cut and dry in the rules you know it, we look for for things that are kind of grayish even if they're a little bit darkish gray <laughs> so if if we find something that, that's like that that we think we can manipulate then then yeah. as a chassis manufacturer we, we work on that stuff yeah. uh i talked to a race car driver last night and one of his comments to me was is that he thought that a lot of the modifications that have been done to modifieds over the years is probably in direct relationship to the tire that you guys have used. In other words, they're still racing on the tire that's been used for years and years through IMCA. Well, of course, obviously, this isn't the same tire that IMCA uses anymore because they have the Hoosier tire. But, you know, if you look at it, it's the exact same tire that we raced on up until the time that the Hoosier came out. And if you look at the Hoosier tread, it looks the same as this. Mm -hmm. um, have we worked on trying to hook the cars apart on this tire? Absolutely, because, you know, we used to run two-link rear suspensions with uh, 450 horsepower motors, and that's the best mm -hmm. we could do because that's all we could hook up. Well, then as as things progressed and things changed and, and people started learning more and, mm -hmm. and shocks came into play and suspensions came more into play, Everybody started to evolve their cars into yeah. something different. So, uh, you know, people started talking about. Uh, I know I was reading it on the internet and and heard something on the radio the other day about when the first four bar cars were being built. I can tell you for a fact, the first four bar cars we built were back in the early '90s uh -huh. uh, for late model guys. You know, uh, whenever Doug Shoop first started running modifieds, uh, when he got to late models, we built four bar cars for him. Mm -hmm. There wasn't a whole lot of other guys that ran them because they weren't, they didn't know a lot about how to adjust them. But yeah. you know, once those started going around here, I bet we had probably six or eight cars around here that were on four bar. Yeah. And I'm talking like, you know, 90, 91, 92 in that range, mm -hmm. um, before almost anybody else started messing with them. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't something for everybody at the time because the knowledge wasn't as readily available. But uh, you know, now the internet's there, so. All kinds of information is available to everybody. Unfortunately, all the information that's available is not the greatest in the world, but, you know. Um, it's out there. It's out there. Yeah. So uh, how long actually has this frame rail issue been going on? For us, we started doing it uh, last year when we started building the Genesis car. Mm -hmm. um, as far as other people doing it, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, you know, I've I've heard stories of been doing it for years, and I've heard stories of, all oh, we just started doing it. So, mm -hmm. um we actually started doing it about a year ago when we started building these cars. Um, uh, it was one of those things we were sitting around trying to figure out how we wanted to make this car better, something mm -hmm. we wanted to try to do to use as a selling aspect for this car. And we got to looking around and, and thinking about some of the things that we were seeing on some of the other cars where they weren't digging in the ground like what mm -hmm. ours did on the rough race tracks and stuff like that. So it's, it's one of those deals like, hey, you know what, I think what they're doing, and we've <laughs> kind of figured it out. So then we started doing it. Uh -huh. So and and it's not like you know we're not cutting it off and putting it up there on top of the deck just because it has to be there right. you know we're just it's a deal where we're raising it up so it doesn't drag in the ground right so this is not a good term but we're going to say uh, monkey see monkey do <laughs> yeah i mean pretty much it, like i said we, whenever we saw that it was going on then it was time yeah. to to try to do something a little bit different in order to be competitive right. yeah, just right. to be competitive just to try to keep right. up with everybody you know i i guess my next question in my mind is is when you were selling these cars 
when these drivers came in to buy them, uh, you were telling them what you were doing. They knew that these 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 frame rails had been raised. Like I said, one of the original aspects of this car when we were building it was we wanted this to be a selling deal. You know, uh-huh. we wanted to be able to tell people they're buying this car. Hey, you know, we're doing this. Mm. It's going to help you. Right. And and we did. You know, and there may be. A few guys that, that escaped here without being told, but you know, uh, uh, anybody that got a bare frame from here could see that something had been done. And, yeah. uh, you know, for the most part, everybody that got one rolling or otherwise knew that something had been done and, okay. and knew what had been done. So they, they knew what they were getting. Right. Okay. All right. Um, one of the racing uh, series owners said here recently that they looked at or talked to seven different chassis manufacturers and out of those seven six were found to be doing the same thing um how many do you know of that are are doing this i've heard the same numbers that you did um when i personally talked to Todd stayed with just MTS last week he told me he didn't say specifics of who he talked to or anything but he told me he had talked to to seven chassis manufacturers. He said, of the seven, one doesn't do anything ever. And I know who that is. Um, you know, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he said, one does it as an option once in a while and mm-hmm. hadn't done very many cars. And he said, the other five of us that he talked to were doing it pretty much all the time. Yeah. So so the, the numbers that you have are, this, are the same numbers that I had heard uh-huh. uh, direct from Todd. So I just, you know, it, this isn't something that it's like there's – you know, I, I'm the only chassis manufacturer that's been on the internet so far that's been been called out because of a car that got checked, and you know, the guy that got checked wasn't afraid to say, "Hey, my car was illegal," mm-hmm. and and it doesn't bother me that that happened at all. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's it's fine that that people know that we were doing it, but you know, there's other things that I think that need to be looked at besides this frame rail. Right, and that has to be in the front end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you know? Since you talked to Todd Staley, is USMTS going to go ahead and allow these chassis to run in their series, or do you know of any other organizations that are? When I talked to Todd, um, I talked to him two or three times last week about this deal because uh, I called him first, then he called me back, and I called him back, he called me back. We were just talking back and forth about the mm-hmm. deal, and I know he was doing it with, with other ma- any manufacturers besides me. Uh, what he told me was he was going to kind of take a census and see – what things look like whenever he got to LA this week. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's going to do it Friday, but since we got rained out last Friday, uh, he had to wait till this week. So hopefully, the weather holds out and he can take yeah. a look and see what we got going on. But um, it, with what him and I have talked about, uh, I listened to him on the radio Saturday. Um, he's not seeing a problem with an inch or two. Mm-hmm. You know, the guys that have four, five, six inches, those ones he's seen a problem right. with. And and I mean, that's there's definitely something else going on there if they got that much, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, it, it. Like I said, it, he hasn't made a definite decision yet. He's what he said on radio the other day was he would have a, a for sure idea what he was going to do on Monday yeah. because once I got done looking at all the cars this weekend, because uh, I got four races now this weekend, um, that they would be discussing on the way home yeah. and and have something on Monday for what they yeah. were going to do. And and in all reality, it's that's a little different situation because uh, USMTS and probably UMP. I mean, they are both uh, traveling all out outlaw modified organizations and uh, really if you're looking at that you're probably saying well why not they've just about got everything else why not right what difference is this going to make but i guess what a lot of people are concerned about in this area on the local racing scene is how this is going to affect local racing and i might just throw this figure out i talked to a race director at a local track here last evening and uh, their position, of course, is is they're going to take a wait and see position as to how competition goes and how these frame rails work out. But uh, I think one of the things that he pointed out to me was that uh, this year at their track in a 20 race season that they had had nine different winners, and I think that represented three or four different champions chassis manufacturers so really that kind of shows that there's fairly equal representation in that group and we've got about 20 seconds for you to say something okay (laughs) well this this in itself what we're what we're talking about here isn't going to win or lose races Mm -hmm. so that's that's why some of the track officials are taking different aspects and different looks at than what some of the other ones are okay that's going to wrap up part one folks we'll be back with part two here